Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In May of 2017, I was diagnosed with a rare type of cancer called Longerhand cell histiocytosis. I've decided to document and share my journey with LCH in hopes that I could raise awareness for this rare disease. It started out in around January, uh, February of 2017, I was having headaches and I went to a doctor, he told me that I was having migraines, he gave me some medication and sent me on my way. I had regular visits with him, he continued to tell me I was suffering from um, severe migraines and he decidedly upgraded my, or yeah, upgraded the dose of my medication, continued to increase that so that he could help control the and prevent the migraines. So I, between January and March, this condi condition just continued to worsen and the pain became so severe that I could not get up and get dressed and go to work. I found myself in a situation where I was just in incredible pain and so my husband and I went to the hospital to see what was going on and to try to get some relief from the pain that I was feeling. So we get to the hospital, we wait forever, we get back to the room finally and without any type of blood test or any type of scans, they basically dismiss me. They tell me that I'm having migraines and that I just needed to take my medication and go see my neurologist again. So I felt a little defeated after that visit because I really felt that something was going on. I felt like something was wrong. I felt like that my body was not the way that it should be. And I really was disheartened by the fact that they did nothing. They did no testing. They did nothing at all for me to try to, de to determine exactly what was going on. So that was just very, it was a very rough time for me because I was in tremendous pain and I felt like there was really no help to get. I had a regular doctor who was seeing me who, who wasn't helping. I went to the emergency room. They didn't help. So I just decided that, you know what, I'm just going to continue to take the medication and I'm going to be okay. It's, um, it's just migraines. So I just continued working and going about my business. As time went on, I, I found that I became very, very fatigued, very weak. And I guess one of the most eye-opening days for me was I, I went hiking, myself and my husband went hiking on the weekend and it was the very first time that I got him to go hiking with me and hiking is the true love of mine. I absolutely love hiking. It is, it is a therapy for me and it's just a time for me to reflect and, and just be out in nature and clear my mind and it's just amazing exercise. It's just, I just love it. So. I had finally got him to go with me and I was so excited and this trail was my trail now. I, I owned this trail. I ran this trail. I jogged this trail. I would go out there for fun and try to beat my time for the last the last hike and this was a four mile um, medium intensity hike so it was it was pretty hard to do but for me I had done it so many times and I was in good physical shape so I could just run this trail and and it was such a joy for me so I was so excited to get out there and show off for him and show him my skills on the hiking trail so we get out there and it's beautiful and there's you know not a cloud in the sky it's just an amazing day and I'm so happy to have him there with me and it's my favorite trail the waterfall trail and I just was so excited so we go we get into the first five or ten minutes or so and I noticed that something wasn't right I was just very winded very tired already and and every muscle was just drained and and I felt like there was just no way I could make it even to you know the first the f first fourth of the trail which is just not me so I was just very concerned but I thought maybe you know I need to warm up and I'll get my second wind or whatever and I'll I'll be able to you know get into my normal mode and and show him what's what here so we continue to walk and he just eventually starts leaving me in the dust you know he's ahead of me and I kept asking him to have to slow down and and let me just say that had never happened I mean I felt bad because there were times I went hiking with friends and I remember, you know, them being behind me and me like egging them on, trying to get them to come on and they were having a really tough time and it was just so 
you know, like a role reversal here, I was lagging and I literally could not do it. Like I just could not do what I used to do every day, all day. And, and you know, it was such a joy for me. I just physically could not handle this trail. So we got to the part where there's like a steep incline and we had to stop about five times. And my husband was really, you know, just like, what is going on? I thought you were going to show me what's what out here. And you just, you know, I'm having to stop every few feet for you. So I was just, I was just really confused. And I never related it to the headaches or the pain that I was having in my head. I just thought that, you know, something's off and whatever. So we, we ended up finishing, you know, the hike. I wanted to stop early, but I was like, no, I'm just, I'm not going to do this. I, you know, it's the first time I ever got him to go. We're going to make it the whole way. So we do make it. We get to the waterfall, sit down a lot longer than I ever have. And then we come back. So uh, by the time I make it to the car, I'm just done. I'm, I am done. Um, exhausted. I'm in so much pain. My head was just it felt like my bone was broken. I mean, it was it was absolutely excruciating. And between the time in May and the time, I mean, I'm sorry, the time in March and the time in May. So this was in May. From the time I had went to the ER previously to this day was about two months. So during this time, there had been a little bit of swelling where the pain was. And, you know, I just didn't think a whole lot of it because they blew me off at the hospital. My neurologist hadn't really said anything. So I didn't think anything of it either. And I just knew that it was, you know, very painful there. I thought maybe it's just inflamed, it's swelling. But um, this day, I, I really realized that once I got home and I, I had to lay down immediately, I, I took ibuprofen, I took Tylenol, I took whatever we had in the house and nothing worked. I just was in miserable pain. I was just crying and I had to go straight to bed cancel the rest of our plans for the day. I mean, I was done. So it was just very eye opening and also very sad that I was just in this place that I didn't understand. And I just felt so ill, but there was no one really telling me what was going on. So that weekend passed and that the week after I went to, I got up to go to work and I was getting dressed and the, the morning that I got my diagnosis. I actually put on, you know, got a shower, got makeup on and stuff and went to put on my clothes and was about halfway through getting ready for work and I had to sit on my couch and I just burst into tears and my husband's like, what's going on? You know, why are you crying? Why aren't you going to work? And I said, I can't go to work. I am in so much pain and something's really wrong with me. So he says immediately, you know what? we're going to the hospital. And I said, no, 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 no. We're not going to the hospital. That doesn't work. I don't want to go. And he said, look, we'll go to a different one, but we're going because something's going on and we need to find out what's going on and get you some help. So we get in the car, we drive to the hospital and we wait forever. And we, while we're waiting, they do blood work and they also did a CAT scan. So they performed the CAT scan. They had all those tests done, but I was still waiting up front. Um, time passed. We got called to the back. And, and when we got called to the back, the doctor finally come to see me. And he says, you know what? You're just having a really bad migraine. And I'm like, no, no. There's no way this is a migraine. It's not a migraine. Um, I've had a migraine before. I've been to the ER recently in the last couple of months because of this pain. And there's actually a swelling here. And I don't understand how a migraine could cause a swelling. And he said, well, actually... Sometimes with very severe migraines, there are swelling, tissue swellings. And I said, well, please don't send me home. Please help me. Please find out what's going on. And, you know, I just, I was pleading with him because I was in pain. I was miserable and I needed to know something. I needed to know what was going on. I needed somebody to help me and I needed relief from this constant pain. And I just couldn't do it anymore. The, the hiking trip where I just physically was fatigued and just completely taken down opened my eyes even further that I have something going on. There's something wrong with me and it's not just a migraine. I really need to push the issue. So this is all going through my mind while I'm sitting here listening to him dismiss me and tell me it's a migraine again. I just was so heartbroken. And so I, I appealed to him and I asked him from the bottom of my heart, please find out what's going on with me. So he goes, you know what? 
just to make sure, you know, I'm sure you're, you just have migraines, but I am going to do a CAT scan just to make sure that everything's okay, give you peace of mind. And I said, actually, they've already done a CAT scan. They did that while I was waiting up front. So he goes, really? Well, I can just pull it up right here. So he whips out this computer screen. He starts typing in. And this man really thought I was having migraines. He thought he was going to show me everything was fine. And he was going to send me on my way. So he pulls out the screen, he types in his login, and he looks at the screen, and his face is just, he looks very confused. And I, myself, I'm a nurse, I've been a nurse for many, many years, so when I saw the screen, it, there was a instant, obvious problem. There was a large hole in my head. So I was just like, honestly, probably had the same look the doctor did. I probably looked pretty confused. Um, I think I had been told so many times that I was having migraines that I probably believed it myself because when I saw the screen and I saw that hole, I was just like, what is, you know, what is that? So, um, the doctor looks at me and he goes, your brain's okay, your brain's okay, your brain's okay, your brain's okay. And I'm like, what? And he said, you have a lesion in your skull. There is a hole, but it looks like the brain's okay. It looks like it has not made it to the brain, but you need to see an oncologist immediately. And I'm like, an oncologist? That's, you know, my brain is processing this in slow motion. And I'm like, that's cancer, but that's a lesion. And, you know, and I'm just, it's like it all came to me, but so slowly. And I just sat there in shock because I just, couldn't believe what I was hearing and I knew the pain was severe and I knew that something was going on but I never dreamed that it was cancer I never dreamed I would hear those words said to me so I feel like probably every cancer patient has thought that at some point that they you know they never thought it would be them um, maybe not I don't know but definitely I never thought that that was gonna be me so I was just in shock and I was, um, I don't know, strangely, I almost was relieved in a sense because I knew something was going on and finally we had gotten to a point where we knew something was going on and we could actually possibly do something about it. I didn't know what, but I knew that we were getting somewhere, but the shock and the fear that hit me and the, um, understanding now that this really was something more serious it was very heavy the weight of it all was very heavy and along with the pain and everything that was going on you know I just really really felt overwhelmed so he goes you know what I'm gonna make some calls find you someone to see and I'm going to get you some really good pain medicine so um, I guess that validated me once he realized that I had a hole in my head, you know, it's time to give her something for the pain. So, um, and, and, you know, actually I, I sound a little jaded there, but the truth is this guy was pretty amazing. This doctor, he actually, I did not have insurance at the time because of this situation with my, my job and different things, but I didn't have insurance and I, well, I say a situation with my job. I was a contract nurse and contract nurses make a little more per hour, but they don't have insurance. So I gave up my benefits because I thought I was a young, healthy woman so that I could make a little more money on my paycheck um, each week. So that's really not a situation. I guess it was a choice, but the thing is, is honestly, I couldn't afford it. Um, I had to do what I had to do to make it and so I did not have insurance and finding out that you have cancer when you have no insurance is quite a blow so this man actually turned out to be pretty amazing and he immediately went into action he spoke to a doctor and he got him to see me on the understanding that I did not have insurance and I didn't have the money to pay up front so it was it was amazing and I feel like God really had his hand in the situation in providing for me and allowing for me to have care for this situation, for my cancer, for this diagnosis and it all just was laid out for me from that point forward. Um, 
I did go to my visit and I was able to get an MRI and confirm the diagnosis and then also I had a biopsy, a needle biopsy of the what I now knew was a tumor and they told me what they thought it was but they used terms that they did not say longer hand cell histiocytosis. They said that there were a lot of different um, stains that they did and certain ones that showed up were what they thought. They were, it was what they suspe suspected. So I didn't know at that time what they suspected. I just knew that they confirmed it was what they suspected. So we went ahead and scheduled surgery for right away. They were trying to get to it before it did invade the brain. So, um, we scheduled that. I went and had surgery. They ended up finding a softball size tumor and hole in my skull. They removed that area and um, reformed my skull with mesh and acrylic. And so this area in here is actually where it was removed. After I was healed from the surgery, I actually had to go and have radiation. They had determined at the time that radiation was the best route, they thought, for this particular diagnosis. Now, I had never heard of longer hand cell histiocytosis. I had never heard of LCH. And most, any my, doc, my cancer doctor had never heard of LCH. So we were, I don't want to say shooting in the dark, but that's kind of what was happening. We, I say we, the doctors were treating me the best that they knew how at the time without fully understanding this particular disease. So they reached out to some people, they had a tumor conference and they found out what kind of worked best for my situation and the limited information that they found dictated surgery and radiation. So that's what we went with and that's, that was, the decision that was made for me. So I went through with that. Radiation was not fun. I had a hard time because I had a large incision across my head from in front of my ear all the way across to the other side of my head. And with the mask on that you have to wear for radiation, it was just very painful pulling and pushing down on that wound. And I, it's just a really tough situation. I lost my hair and, you know, I just really took a sucker punch, so to say, with this. It came out of left field and, and it hit me really hard. And so I, I just dove in head first and I did like I do with my hiking or anything else. I just pushed through the best I knew how. At this time, I was focusing all my energy on the treatment and getting through what I had to do. So I just didn't feel comfortable opening up to people and the public and social media about my cancer. It may sound silly, but everyone I knew who had made channels or had made prayer pages or different things like that, they were all dying or gone, had passed away. And in my mind, if I if I spoke it out loud or if I made these social media pages to to ask for prayers and things, I felt like it was my death sentence. And I don't know why I felt that way, but I did. And it was just something I had to overcome. I've decided if I was gonna do this channel, if I was going to document and share my journey, then I'm going to be completely honest and as open as I can be. I have come to a place in this in this journey that I am ready to open up and to share. I want to raise awareness for LCH. It is such an unknown disease. It is so rare. There are so few doctors that can treat this anywhere in the world, not just the United States, but anywhere. And I want to raise awareness. I want to help others that are facing this disease and other chronic diseases those who have chronic pain and just the things that they go through. I, I want you guys to know you're not alone. There are so many people that suffer in silence and I know that each person knows when they're ready to share, when they're ready to open up. So I am ready to share. I'm ready to be transparent and honest. I'm ready to let you guys in on my life and 
on my journey. I'm ready to share with you what goes on daily, what's went on in the past, and I have many, many stories to tell and, and many different situations that I've been through. But I just wanted to give kind of a overall cancer story, cancer journey type video for my first video to let you know what is going on and why I'm sharing and what you'll be watching. If you subscribe and you, you hit the little bell so that you can see all my videos, you'll know what's coming. Um, it will mainly be cancer related content. It'll be sometimes just day to day living with cancer, living with pain. I'm going to try to show you the raw you know, footage of bad days as well as good days. I'm going to try to show you what it's like to live with cancer after the diagnosis, after treatment, in between treatments. It's, it's such a process and most cancer patients have follow up for life. It's not over once they've finished their chemo or their radiation. It continues and it's such an emotional thing that you go through and it's such a process and I just feel like talking to you guys will be a type of therapy for me it'll allow me to open up and share and get some of this out it's so hard sometimes to process what I'm thinking so therefore it's hard to share it with others and honestly most people especially people who've never dealt with cancer they don't understand what I'm saying. They, they've never been there. They don't know what it's like. They don't know what the the fear, the pain, the emotional toll that it has on you to lose your hair, to, um, to just face things daily that a lot of people would consider trivial or not important until they go through it their self. But once you go through this, you have a whole different view on life and of course on cancer. So I want to share with you these things. I am going to update regularly. I want to take you guys to visits um, and film as much of those as they'll let me um, to my MRIs. I have a, several tests coming up. I have um, two MRIs. My last PET scan showed activity in my mouth and throat area, so I have to have a diagnostic MRI to see if the LCH is actually active in there. I'm having more pain and increased pain in my head back in the original location, so I'm not sure what's to come, but I want to document each and every bit of it and share it with you guys, and I hope that you will find something useful out of these videos that you will be able to share your stories with me that we can lean on each other and have just a family here where we encourage and uplift each other through whatever we may be going through and it doesn't have to be cancer it doesn't have to be chemo or radiation it can be anything that you're dealing with that you feel like you need just a family to belong to so welcome to my channel Welcome to Jalita's Journey, and I hope to see you guys around. Thank you so much for watching this video. I know it's been long, but I, it's hard to tell this story without taking a moment. And then hopefully I can get content up that you guys are interested in and then to make you aware. Because honestly, like I've said before, my number one goal is to raise awareness for longer hand cell histiocytosis and the other histio diseases because they're just very rare they're not commonplace and we need more funding and more research and we need more doctors that understand what the signs and symptoms are and even as individuals we need to know what to look for so that when it's happening to us we don't allow months to go by without getting help we know hey there's something going on i need to i need you to help me you know and find out that there's a hole in your skull sooner rather than later so Thank you guys again for watching. Welcome to my channel. I'll talk to you soon. Thanks. Bye-bye.